Okay, we're going to look at the role of government in a market economy, and we know that we're looking at um, how much government participation is in a particular government. We looked at that in a past unit. Um, in the United States, um, we have a free market. We are a capitalist economy where freedom is extremely important. Um, but having said that, we do know that the government pays, plays a pretty substantial role in almost everything we do in our lives. Um, but the, um, we're going to look at some of the things that they do um, that relate directly with um, our economy. And so the first thing is this idea of enforcing laws and contracts. And so um, we want to make sure that everyone's property is protected, whether that's physical property or that intellectual property, the patents, the copyrights, and the trademarks. And so everyone has an incentive to continue to produce and to innovate um, and to see our economy grow because we know that when we produce something that the government is going to protect that and if somebody violates those intellectual property rights or even our um, actual physical property that the government is going to step in and um, do something to help us um, and that's even the, the same thing with contracts you cannot violate a contract or the government will step in and you know if there is a binding contract they're going to make sure and force um, that that contract to be fulfilled, I guess. Um, to maintain competition, we have antitrust laws and we have different laws that the government says that we can't have monopolies in the United States. No one company can dominate in any one particular industry because what makes us so great is competition. And we know that competition um, is one of those things with the invisible hand by everybody pursuing their own self-interest and competition that benefits customers with quality products and low, pri low prices. And so um, we're going to make sure that um, if businesses want to merge together and combine and like the two, uh, let's say we have the three automobile industries within in, uh, the United States, there's no way that our government is going to allow them to combine into one large one um, because competition is extremely important. Um, and another thing is the redistribution of wealth. Um, we pay taxes. Wealthy people pay a higher percentage of their income towards taxes because they take some money from the wealthy and we are going to redistribute that to lower income people in the form of food stamps, um, housing, uh, rent control, um, and all of the different welfare programs that we have. So we re this idea of redistribution, we're going to take more from the wealthy and then redistribute it down um, in, the, in the form of some safety nets. Um, I'm going to look at the difference between a public good and a private good. A private good is um, anything that we go and we buy at the store. It's private. I buy that. I consume it. Nobody else gets to use it once again. That's where the government steps in and protects our physical property. But a public good, um, and we're going to do some stuff with that, but um, a public good is something, there are two characteristics to it. Um, the first one is it's non-exclusion or exclu exclusive. We cannot exclude someone from using it. So I have some examples here. The roads and highways. Anyone can use the roads and highways. They're non-excludable. Everybody has access to them. Uh, national defense. We cannot exclude someone from living in the United States. Even if they don't pay any taxes, they still benefit um, from this public good. And then lighting, that's, you know, street lighting in town. Um, we can't exclude anyone from using that light. If anybody's walking up, uh, down a street that has that light, we can't exclude them. And the other one is shared consumption. Um, uh, another term sometimes used is non-rivalrous. If I'm driving down the highway, that does not diminish anyone else's ability to drive down that highway. By me consuming national defense, that does not uh, diminish your use of national defense. If I am getting light from the light there, um, that does not exclude you from getting light from it either. And so, or if it doesn't diminish um, how much light you get. So we can't exclude people from using public goods. And by one person consuming it, it has zero impact on anyone else um, consuming that particular product. 
and externalities, finally, on this video. Um, externalities can be positive or they can be negative. And what you need to understand about an externality is it is a third or it is a cost or a benefit to a third party who has nothing in that transaction. So um, the most popular negative externality is pollution there. So you see that factory down at the bottom, um, all of that pollution coming out. Um, that's a business and they are producing a product and they're supplying a product to a customer. Well, if you live anywhere in that area and you don't purchase that product, that pollution is a cost that you pay. You are a third party who has some sort of cost in the form of pollution despite the fact that you have nothing going on with either the buying or the selling of whatever is made in that particular factory. So a negative externality is a external cost pollution, noise pollution, uh, air pollution, um, <clears throat> anything like that, that a third party has to bear the cost but doesn't have anything in the transaction. A positive externality is when um, a third party gets a benefit. Um, and so um, you have the thing there on the left where it's talking about vaccinations. You know, the fact that we vaccinate our children is a benefit to everyone walking around because we're not spreading diseases. Education also has, um, is, a, is an example of a positive externality. Um, we educate people because we want them to be um, uh, more productive members of society. Um, and by them being more productive um, members of society, um, everyone benefits from that, even though they might not bear any of the cost in the education. And so this next part is really important. If um, a product is giving off a negative externality, what the government will do to try and get them to stop is they are going to place a tax on that. And so businesses that pollute, the government taxes them to try and get them to decrease the amount of pollution or to increase the price of those who are buying that product um, so they bear more of the cost of what it is to make that. So to get rid of negative externalities, the government is going to tax a business. To get more things that have a positive externality, the government is going to subsidize or give money to those institutions. So we know that when we get shots as very young kids, those are free. The government subsidizes and pays for that because they're, they're so beneficial to everyone. And we know that um, public education is for the most part free. It's very, very cheap that the government actually subsidizes or pays for everyone to go to school so that we can all benefit from that positive externality.